Let's see if they can spring Hafner or Simmons loose for a three-pointer. The yeah. Aces have been taking a lot of three-pointers, but instead it's Beltra Dawson. And here come the Ramblers on the move. Boy. And Timmy Bankston and Jim Cruz says, I've seen enough of this. That is Bankston's specialty. Going inside. My goodness. We have got 13 Miller's have opened up the game now, 62-50. And the Aces are really going to have to turn things around. They have made a substitution. They have Curtis Jackson in. But the running Ramblers have run off, literally run, as they got out on the break that last time and now have a 12-point lead. Well, one of the reasons for Loyola increasing their lead has been the play of Kenny Miller and Tim Bankston. This guy drives nicely inside for the land. Guy that's coming off a broken hand. Didn't look like he had too much trouble there. And Bankston with some good defense on Curtis Jackson. And it goes off his foot there, though. Marty will bring it up this time. Gives it off to Scott Hafner. And the Noblesville Junior transfer out of the University of Illinois brings it up. He gets it to Simmons, and Marty is no good from three points. Boy, foul. great. That's a technical foul. Great defensive work by the Aces there. They desperately needed a rebound. Jeez. Here's a look. Gene Sullivan really Johnson upset. goes in, makes a nice move, tries the reverse layup, and then the Loyola Rammers all over the boards. No reason why they didn't, shouldn't have come up with that rebound, but look at the slap away there by Godfrey. And <laughs> what do you give him Bankston, on that dive? I give him about a 9-4. Oh, boy. He was rather upset by getting called with that foul as Hafner goes to the line. Scott will go and shoot the technical foul, and he hits it. Hafner now with seven points on the evening. Maybe that's uh, the kind of thing the Aces need right now. Some way to fire them up. I mean, that's a board that Loyola should have had and should have scored on, but didn't. So Aces will take anything they can get. The Aces, the Aces almost made that hurt, but he missed the three-pointer. Chris Pomba with some nice defense in the backcourt. And Olaf Flop is now checked into the game. Olaf, the seven-footer out of Charleston. Uh, well, let's, let's get them all here and see if we can get them all in if we have time. Munich, West Germany, Charleston, Illinois, and a transfer from the University of Illinois. Now, he's br been brought in exclusively to get some rebounding and play some defense. Olaf Lob, that is. And because that's something they desperately need right now. They need the ball, and they need to keep Loyola off the boards. And, uh... Let's see if Olaf gets a breather, or, or uh, I mean, Bomba will get a breather, and yes, the Aces will go with seven foot Olaf Lop and six, nine and a half Dan Godfrey. We talked about it Saturday night in our halftime feature on Olaf. And, uh, and an offensive foul on Keith Carter. So now can the Aces come back with their twin tower effect and see if they can give some problems to the Loyola Ramblers. Well, apparently Carter kind of ran over. Ha happened early, I believe. The Aces now trail at 62-51, trying to cut into an 11-point lead. Marty into Gottfried and flips it back out for three. And Olaf is called for the foul, but the basket will count, and it's a three-pointer. Well, Olaf in there underneath, trying to get position. Gene Sullivan and assistant coach Doug Bruno instructing the Ramblers, who are now up by eight. That was a three-pointer. That's his first, team's fifth. Yeah. Inside. And they call it on Blop. Blop picks up his first foul. Well, check it, that's his second foul, because he just picked up one Boy. down the didn't take him long to pick up a couple. And now 16 yeah, fouls. Reaching stand. over Miller. He was out of position. Miller with the, with the position, and that's an obvious foul. Now the free throws may come into effect. 
because there's already 16 fouls, so now the next ace is foul. They go to the line. They go to the line. What will happen? Oh, Hardy. Simmons took a fall. He took a fall. He landed on his left wrist. That's not the wrist that he had trouble with. And this, uh, maybe they did bring in Blob to, to pick up a couple of fouls, so they could eventually get him the line, thinking that they're not going to hit their free throws have, that they've been hitting in the first half. Maybe they'll not a chance, back. Dan. No, well, <laughs> just a thought. <laughs> You don't think? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Carter misses the free throw. So they're at the line now the rest of the way. And Antoine Johnson, Juan, picking up the foul. And that is his second. And the Aces now are shooting free throws as well. And some of the fans really getting on the officials now do not like what's happening. Marty, who is an 84% free throw shooter on the year, 88 in league play. And he gets his first free throw here in the second half, and that's his third free throw of the evening. Well, they're going to have to make a move now, or at some point, and now would be a good time. 11 and a half minutes left, and Marty hits them both. For 21 his 20, points. His 21st points, and the Aces now just trail at 62. The 59. 56, correction. Wishful thinking, Dean. <laughs> Rambler showing some patience on offense. Trying to milk a little bit of the clock, set up and work for a good shot. This is an important time down the floor for them. They get it inside to their main man, and they call a travel. Trying to get it inside to that front line. Those guys can do some damage, and Nate Brooks. Well, Blob was defending him, and maybe uh, Brooks was a little intimidated by the seven-footer. And here comes Curtis on the run, and he gets it knocked away from behind, but has the presence of mind. And, and it's Blob again. Olaf picks up his third foul, and he says, come on, the guy is elbowing me. Well, maybe I wasn't right about that earlier theory, Dean. <laughs> Well, we're going to find out because they're going to shoot free throws on the other end. And uh, let's see if it is Nate Brooks, who I believe is six for seven on the evening from the free throw line. Well, he's, you know. Unconscious. Yeah. So uh, he's due to miss a couple here, right? Well, I don't know. For a 42% free throw shooter on the season, you would think so. Good form, but rolled it off the side of the rim. And the ace is still with a chance to cut the lead. Marty from the baseline can't get it. Olaf uh, had it and lost it. That's a ball he should have had right there. It's certainly a, Sim a shot Simmons usually makes, but it's a, it's a rebound Blot should have had. Johnson goes down the lane. And they call it on Curtis. And Curtis is picking up some hard luck fouls right now. Loyola, four turnovers and 0 for 3 at the free throw line this half. So back to reality for the Ramblers? You never know. Curtis has had a tough time in there picking up some really tough fouls and he really didn't hit them hard. And Twan hits the twine for number nine. <laughs> oh boy. Five free throws now for the 6'6". 190-pound junior out of Lincoln Park High School in Chicago. Boy, he looked like the nation's leading free throw shooter. Uh, he looked that like Archie Tellis, didn't yeah. he? And an eight-point lead now is we have ten and a half minutes left to go in the game. Inside to Godfrey. Godfrey with the hook, and Miller brings it down. The ace is knocking away. Great hustle by Curtis. Tries to throw it. It's tipped out of bounds. Great hustle. Great hustle by Curtis Jackson. 